Hey everybody, welcome back to Appify Your Business. In some situations, you may want to create a PIN number entry mechanism inside your application. Now, there's no default built-in way to actually make a field to have secure entry in that when you enter characters into a field, you mask the characters and not show what has been entered into the field. So to create this experience in AppSheet, you need to use a combination of some different functions inside of AppSheet to create this experience. But once you do, you have this experience here where you can have a pin number pad that is random in nature and it reshuffles every time you hit a button and gives the display that you have mass characters being entered. So those numbers aren't being presented to anybody that's maybe standing behind the user that's entering this into a kiosk or something to that effect. The finishing effect is once you enter the last PIN number, the form is complete and captured and saved into a data source in your app. And then you could take that and create whatever mechanisms you need for validation of that PIN number. But this video, I just wanted to focus on how do we create this experience of a form that looks like this with the number pad that shifts and is random in nature. So we'll get started here by creating a new blank application. This will create an app sheet database that we could use as our backend data source. Okay, now that we have this table added, I'm gonna click view data source to open up the database. The goal here with what we wanna capture is a pin number with four values that can be input. So you're going to have one column here that will capture the entire pin number. And then we'll have another one that is going to be a text field. We'll call this pin one. And we'll do this four times. We'll go ahead and delete all the records there. So we have Secure pin, pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four. And for the pins, the pin one, pin two, pin three, and pin four, we want to make these number columns. So with this change in place, let's go into the app and we will regenerate the table. And then we'll go ahead and we'll leave this uh, a deck view here. We'll just call this um, pins. And then we're going to use this form here as the helper input for our pins. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is, because we don't want to show the pin to people for security reasons, right? So someone looking over the shoulder of somebody inputting the pin number, we'll want to make sure that secure pin is going to be hidden at all times. So we'll just uncheck show there to make it disappear. Now for each of the input values below, we want to make sure that we're going to give options for each one, basically zero to nine for what values are allowed to be entered in each field. So this isn't very intuitive. So what we want to change these two are buttons that can be pressed. So for each pin, we're going to change the type here to enum with a base type of number. So AppSheet still treats this as a number. And so we'll go through for each of these and update this. and choose button for each one. Okay, with it saved, you'll get some warning messages that the enum should have a list of allowed values. You can ignore these. Now you can see that as a user, I could just punch a button and I record the values into the form. So now we need to selectively hide the selection when someone isn't actually on the entry, i.e. if I haven't entered the first pin number yet, I should only see the first one. The second one will come after I enter the first one and so on and so forth. So we need to use a show if condition for each pin. The way this works is if pin one is blank, then we want to show pin one. Okay. If pin two is not, or sorry, if pin one is not blank, then we want to show pin two. 
And also, we will show it if N2 is blank. So this will be AND, where we have these two conditions to check. Make sure that this only shows in that condition. And I'll go ahead and copy this so I can quickly paste it and just replicate this for each one where I'm incrementing the pin input field for each one. All right. Then we'll hit save. So now our form has this look in the fact where when I click a number, then it goes to the second field, the third field, fourth field, and fifth field until I've clicked all the buttons. Now I'm going to temporarily add in this secure pin field back so we can actually see it populate and we can use this for troubleshooting if we need to. And the one thing we need to do here for secure pin is add an initial value that's going to concatenate all the values together here. So we're simply going to go pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four, and then we'll treat that as the value that we'll use. We'll go ahead and hit save. Now when we look at our form, I could hit a number and we'll watch that field get populated. Now we get to the stage where we need to give some kind of indicator as into how many characters somebody has entered in for their pin number. And this is the typical thing you see when you see pin numbers. You see a bunch of circles that hide the value that somebody's entering from the number pad. To create this, we're going to need to create a virtual column. That's going to be a show column. We'll call this pin input display. For the, the value here, we need to check to see how many characters are in this field. Okay, so we're going to check it by length. So we're basically going to do switch length of pin, secure pin. And if there's one, then we'll have one character. If there's two, then three, so on and so forth. So when we have one character length, then we will have one star, and then two star, three star, and four star. Then if there's nothing, then we will have no star. And then we'll make sure we have commas here to separate the inputs. So just to review here, with this formula, we'll clean that up a bit, with this is a switch function, and the switch function works by calculating some formula and then the results of that formula, you're going to have a bunch of pairs to basically have some kind of uh, result that you're looking for. And then the resulting value you want to have an output for this function. So in this case, if we have one character length, then we have one star, two, three, and four, and so forth. So with this added, we have this app formula here. We're going to change this to a show column with the category of a text field. Actually, let's do a section header. And for the content, we will use pin input display column to represent this column here where this app formula is valid. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And now you can see when I punch the number in, you'll see that I am building out this display here for my pin input. So with this in place, we can now modify our, our form layout and place this on top and then put the additional pin one through four inputs down below. And now we can watch how when we input values, you'll see that we're getting the user feedback into the pin each time they, they successfully enter a pin value. And we could do a little bit better than this display in that with our pin input display, let's actually give some feedback into how many characters are expected. So we could actually add underscores to this app here. You clearly identify that there's going to be four characters required. So we could add this effect here where after one's input, then we could show the additional values And that I shouldn't have put four there. 
I should have only had three. So now we have this input here and we could enter this value and it's pretty intuitive to see how you're progressing with the pin number when it's fully filled in. We can also add a format rule if we wanted to make that more prominent, um, that, that display a little bit bigger. We can just simply choose that pin input display and come down here and make it bold, make it you know 1.7 size, and then that's going to be a little bit easier to see. We'll give this a name so I don't forget. We could also create a display for the number input to make them a little larger as well. So we could, we could apply this to pins, pin entries one through four, and we can make that bold and a little bit bigger so it shows up a little bit better in the app. And you can make this even bigger so that we are actually leveraging more of the, the second row so it's not there's not such an overflow there. You might have to play with this depending on the screen size of your device. This emulator doesn't necessarily represent typical screen sizes. I think it's a little smaller, so um, you could look at the tablet mode and see how that changes. So just kind of play it by ear. Uh, you might also want to take this concept and you could manually add more input fields for multiple like rows if you needed to. Okay, so now it looks like we're getting pretty close here when we click that. It's looking pretty good and we know when the user is done. The next thing we'll do is when the user completes their pin, the form should auto save. And there might be other specific workflow types you want to implement, but we'll just show what that looks like if uh, you're going to auto save that entry. Auto save is available inside of the form view itself. There's this option here called auto save. You want to make sure you turn on. And once you turn that auto save on, now the form has this effect. When we go ahead and enter the pin, when we get to the end, the form is saved automatically. And you see we have the pin number recording to the table. Here. And if we flip back to the AppSheet database, you'll see that the pin got entered. After you develop this mechanism, you could then just do simple comparisons to whether this pin number is valid or not based off the user. You can compare it to a known user table where you have the user pins stored. The next thing you'll want to do for each of your inputs here. You don't necessarily want to display the, the display name of the column there. So what you can do is add a display name for each of the, the fields here that is an empty space. So from the user's perspective, they're not actually seeing this pin one, pin two, pin three thing. They just see an input number pad that they can punch in to the form. So lastly, what we're going to cover here is what if you want to randomize the order of the pins, right? So that's going to be more secure, especially if you have some kind of kiosk mechanism where you might want to capture a pin number and not necessarily keep the numbers in the same place. We can do this by essentially creating a random number between 1,000 and 9,999 to determine the starting order of each number. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and we will create a virtual, another virtual column, which is going to represent pin order. This formula is going to be very simply rand between 1,000 and 9,999. This will generate that number. And we'll actually convert this to a text after we generate the random number. And I'll show you why later. So we're going to take this random number, and this is going to represent a starting point for each of the inputs. That's why we have four digits that we're using here as our input. So we'll jump into our pin, and we have our list of values that are created for the entry. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the top of the list. This top function basically takes the top, takes a list, and then takes the top entries up to a certain amount that you define. So in this case, what we're gonna define is that first digit from the pin order number, that random number that we're creating. So 
this is going to be a number where we're going to take the left. Uh, we'll, we'll just call it mid. We'll use mid here for the pin order. And we will start with one and grab the, and grab the character after that. And then that's a number, and then we'll close it off. So this formula has the effect now to generate the values of a zero to n type order based off the pin number. And we can test this real quick to see the results. And you can see that the random number generated here was eight. So we have zero through eight. If we run this test again, we'll have a different order, zero through three. That's the chunk that is going to be random essentially for each input. And then what we want to do is subtract that from the full list. So we're going to remove those that bottom series that we've calculated with the, that random number. And that has the effect of this, where we now have four through nine. And then we could very simply add on this same result as well to the end. So the full result is going to be two through one. And you can see how now we have the starting order that's going to be randomized for each pin. So we can go ahead and take that. Uh, we'll copy that string, and then we'll replicate it for each pin entry, only changing the actual point at that we're assessing from that random number. And that, that will be a 2 for the second one, 3 for the third one, and 4. We'll save it. So now we have our pin here that our, our order starts differently. And this just helps with security of the pin number. So the finger isn't always going to the same place on the pad. And you can see how this changes every time you hit that value. And it can save that value to the table. And there are probably ways you could do more complicated um, random numbers. One of the flaws with this is it's always going in order. So zero through nine, seven, eight, nine, and then so on and so forth. But it's a relatively simple method to do. You can make it more complicated where you're determining a random, um, completely random order for each string as well. So with that, thanks for watching. If you have any other ideas for videos, please let me know. I'm happy to try to create these videos. Uh, and as always, Please place any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and have a good one.